I caught that. Three, two, one. <laughs> Had a couple drinks. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we're no, recording now. Not really. No. No, I, I did. I did. I had a meeting before this, and I had a uh, had a couple of drinks about that. Forrest, welcome to the Right Balance Podcast. Uh, you're you're local. You grew up and you were born in LA, right? Born and bred in LA. I went to uh, high school in Notre Dame and Sherman Oaks over here off uh, Woodman. So I've been around here for a minute. Yeah, it's good. Uh, have you vi- have you traveled outside of LA or? Yeah, yeah, totally. So I backpacked through Europe. Um, when I was in college, I went to CSUN and then somehow maneuvered an extra grant out of them and traveled through. Off uh, the grant. Yeah, off the grant. That's I had Best Buy. I was working at Best Buy full-time, and I had uh, Best Buy was paying for uh, full-time school, and then they gave me a grant, and I, t- I took that money, and I went to Europe for about three months. What year was this? Um, you know what? It was during the World Cup in Africa. So, oh, so I was Shakira's in Barcelona. Waka Waka. Yeah, yeah. That's so I was in Barcelona when Spain won, uh, got their quarterfinals win. What was that, 2008? I want to say like 2012, 2011. That 2012. makes sense because you had the 94, 98, 12. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so 18. I think it. Or no, I'm sorry. I was, I could drink, so it was like probably 22. 20, yeah. And then I went to Amsterdam when Netherlands won the semifinals. And then when we were in Paris when... The World Cup or the, the, the season finale or whatever happened, uh, and I was broke. I, I was eating like baguettes and drinking Heineken, and that's pretty much it. That's uh, that's crazy because the last person that, that that did the podcast that traveled to Amsterdam was broke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. they're like, well, they 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 ended up in Italy, and they were like, I was homeless. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, my ticket expired, and uh, you know, I I, I I I felt shame to like hit up my parents because my parents were like, you're gonna go there and you're gonna run out of money. You gotta be fucked and good luck and, and good luck and and not me and you know within like four months the ticket expired and he had no job yeah and he was like under a bridge you know like <laughs> fucking doing not, that I wasn't yeah. that bad I was yeah. I was in a nice hotel we did get bed bugs uh, that's another story but uh, I did manage to make it back on time um, but it was a good time it was it was great I've, you no know, everybody I, makes it back even even this guy he made it back like he has a huge one of the biggest clothing lines in mexico and in los angeles you know like it working up, and it's it like, up. It's, it's, it's amazing <laughs> yeah it's like motorcycle but it's all satanic it's all like fucking mm. la marca del diablo oh. the brand of the devil okay so it's it, it's insane but like you need those stories that's that's what that's part of growing us. up that's part of growing up yeah yeah that's yeah, good stuff but could you imagine because uh, what did you have back then facebook there wasn't yeah, Instagram, no right? facebook had just come out I remember Facebook coming out. Um, 14, right? 13, 14? No, no, no. It was in 06. My, our, my oldest. Or sorry, but that's my, for my people b- that went to school. Right, right. Yes. So in, in 06, <laughs> my best friend uh, Dickman, his older brother, Robert Dickman. Excuse me, Robert. I'm sorry, brother. Um, he, I forgot what school he got into, but he was like, oh, there's this thing called Facebook. And like we started, and we had to wait until we got our college email address to put it in. So that's when I got into Facebook. Like 07. So, so I'm trying to think. Uh, I think 07 was the introduction of iPhone. Right, m- yeah, maybe, yeah. 07 was the introduction to Dude, that. I can't believe that was like almost 20 years ago. That's, that's, that's insane. Right? Yes. It is. It's crazy well, to yeah, think five, of. And five, it's 15 years ago. And you're thinking about like 2000 and it's t- 2020, about to be 2023, and you're like, fuck. Like, <laughs> what have you, have you, when you get a chance, watch that video again. Which one? Uh, the... the um, the Steve Jobs introducing oh the, the iPhone the original iPhone it's it's fucking amazing it's like imagine having a phone and an iPod on the same device yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> <man. laughs> oh this is the fucking mind have you seen the the Microsoft or the introduction <laughs> I think it was Windows ninety eight where like Bill Gates is like dancing oh yeah, on the yeah, stage yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah, all yeah, these white boys out. that have no fucking no rhythm yeah, they're they're fucking so, they look like slobs they're yeah. all fucking blah, that's like, funny yeah they're, yeah it's like okay Ner- it's like the happiest they've been in their life nerdy fucking right. hair but hey Bill cool. Gates got a billion dollars let's go. <laughs> He can do what he, he can dance how he wants. Have you have you heard of the uh, the the difference between a million seconds and a billion seconds in time? No. Like, so a million seconds is uh, I think it was like eleven days or twelve days. Oh wow! A 
Okay. It's a long time. Yeah. A, a million seconds. A billion is what, a month? A billion is what, a month? No, it's more than that. What is it? Imagine a million <laughs> is eleven to twelve days. All right. Fuck well, you, so there's there's what there's there's ten. No, there's there's a hundred million and a billion. So you're talking about eleven? Is it eleven hundred days? Tell me, what's the answer? You ready? <laughs> it's thirty two years. A million. The difference between a million seconds and a billion seconds is eleven days to thirty two years. That's so when somebody's like at a million, like I want to make a billion, like understand that fucking difference. Yeah. Like it's humongous. It is. And, and and people don't fucking see it that way. But yeah, it's basically it's it's a it's a hundred times divided by, you know, three hundred and sixty five days. Right. And I've I've done the math. Thirty two years. I wonder if that's eleven hundred days. That probably. No, I don't think uh, so. let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't I don't have any calculators on me right now. Hey Siri. What's um, a billion seconds in time? Okay, I found this on the web for one billion seconds in time. Check it out. You know what? Because th- there's a way. Okay, I'll hook that up. I'll hook that up. But but yeah, it's 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 it's, it's thirty two years. It's fucking insane. That's crazy. It's fucking insane. It's almost it, as old as oh, I'm thirty four. So that's 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 a long time. It's a long time. So think about when, like, Kanye is worth, like, $4 billion. Like, what? You know, no, or fucking... A billion dollars is insane. Like, now, like, a million dollars is, is, is not that much, but it's it's still a lot. And, uh, you know, when you're thinking about, like, a house at this point, because that's basically what we're, like, you know, a million dollars for a house. Like, you, you try to put that money down, and it's still a lot of money. Like, even if you come up with two hundred grand, like, a million dollars is still a lot of money. Um but it's not at the same time. So it's it's not it's not it's not sustainable. Right. It, it's it's there to buy a bunch of shit and but it's not sustainable. I, I, I heard I heard the magic number would be like about twenty five million. If you have twenty five million, it's like, okay, I could buy any car I want, I could buy a house, as long as you don't want a yacht, you're not worried about it. Dude, it takes so long to get twenty five million, it's not even that's not even like a if I can get a million, that'd be good. But you say that, you say that, but like, I don't think so. Living well, at, living in LA, like, I, I don't think so. Are, are you married, kids? I have a fiance. Yeah. Uh, That's a million dollars right there. You know, she's going to take a million dollars right there. <laughs> like, like <Yeah>. automatically. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> she's, <laughs> it's just a joke. It's just a joke. No, she's good. She's she's pretty frugal. She actually keeps me under wraps because um, I'd spend a fuck ton more if I. No, I but, 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 but trust me, like, she does that because she knows how much money you have. She's like, honey, like, let's just be conservative. Let's fucking protect this. Let's invest. Let's grow. This right, is what yeah, we yeah. have to do with this caliber. Yeah, no, she's, but she's, when you make more money, it's like, well, you know, we have to buy the house and we have to fix it up this way. And we right. need this table to match these chairs and these oh, chairs yeah. and fucking chairs. And pillows. Dude, I was, pillows. I was looking at pillows. More. Yeah, more pillows. More. <laughs> it was $800 a chair. For dining room chairs. I'm sorry. $800. I'm not doing that. And, and, and my wife's like, you, you like these? I go, no. No. Not, not for $800. Not a fucking, maybe for 200 yeah, Like, maybe 800 for all of them? I like, know. You know. Exactly. Four <laughs> chairs, like, 800 like 200 pop. Ashley's furniture or something? Like, but everything's so much more expensive. Easily, a million will go. Like, right. for a house, you're not going to. You've been to, uh, what's that What's that thing called? Um, oh, my God. RH, Restoration Hardware. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is like. Same. Yeah. Right, the, the, the table the, the, in the house. Oh, it's a yeah, it's probably uh, like two dresser. grand. Yeah, yeah, two yeah. grand. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, yeah. Pocket change, bro. Come on. <laughs> Not like Ikea, though, you know. It's like <laughs> yeah. a couple hundred bucks. But I still got what? my Ikea shit, though. I'm no, telling you that right now. I'm going to tell you something. Fuck Ikea. No, fuck Ikea. No, like, I, like, I, I'm I literally, Ikea. I literally, the, this was my last experience I had with an Ikea. I was looking for, and it's funny because I, I had the cabinet here. But I was looking for like a, a cabinet style piece of furniture, yeah. and uh, IKEA had this roller cabinet, like desk thing. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a desk. It was like literally for like clothes oh, okay. slash toolbox. It looks like a toolbox, but, but it had it's a like roller. For on it. That's weird. But it had a roller door. Okay, okay. It was the most confusing thing to put together. Number one, like I, I was like, what? I the know. F- I like to tell my fuck. 
my fiance that I have a <laughs> degree in like IKEA, like uh, contractor shit. You know, <laughs> are you good at putting that shit together? Oh yeah, I I, I can oh. put together. I put together. I, some I, I can put confusing together confusing stuff. I could put together long lasting stuff. It's all figurines though too. Like yeah, it's like okay. How but when it gets work? bullshit, like weird, like <laughs> puzzle shit. Like it when, is hard. You take a couple when days. It's, when it's a fucking table and you're like, wait a minute, a table's got a fucking top. Yeah, there's a four legs and a yeah. four leg. That's it. That's it. Why is this broken up to a thousand people? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, anyways. So after I put this thing together, it looks sloppy. Oh god. It looks shitty. I didn't like really it. Wiggling it was and wiggling and stuff oh, like this. Okay. And, I, and I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I returned it and for some reason, Best Buy had um, what's this brand? A gl- Gladiator? Are you familiar with Gladiator? No, no, no. They're garage. They're, they're like they do like little cabinets and stuff oh, like that. Oh, cool. But it's called Gladiator. This is Gladiator. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it goes up and down too, huh? Well, yeah, that goes up and down Sweet. and manually. <laughs> this thing I've had for like six years. Okay, once I stepped away from the IKEA thing of the convenience of price for a little bit more, I got something that la- cuz here's the thing with, here's the thing with IKEA. You oh, set it you set, you set it up quick. once, if you don't move it, it lasts forever. But if you move, right, but I'm on. always having I still have the dresser that I got in law school cuz I when I went to law school, I went to IKEA and I'm like you went to law school? Yeah, I did go to law school. What are school. you an attorney? I am an attorney. Holy I'm a criminal defense fuck. attorney. Fuck, the best in town. And I do personal injury. So if you guys get into an accident, uh, and I don't for know all those motorcyclists out there. I don't know if you know this, but you're 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 my he's he's the ride boundless attorney. He's my attorney. Like I go to everything. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you. that. And and, and I, I, ju- I just started that. <laughs> I just started that, and I promise that's going to continue Great. on record. Let's do it on record. I'll protect you. Um, fuck IKEA. Buy quality furniture, spend a little bit extra money. Let's yes. get into the law. Um, now, you're a criminal attorney. Yeah. Does, what does that umbrella cover? Is that just murder, so, stealing, DUIs? Or I mean, it covers, accidents? it covers, um, you know, anything from uh, murder, attempted murder, which is obviously the, the worst crimes you could commit, to tickets, to infractions. So I do DUIs, I do domestic violence, I do. Um, uh, possession of, of drugs, you know, um, p- p- uh, possession with intent to sell. Um, I got a buddy of mine. I got to tell you this story. He's probably not going to like this, but I'm not going to say names. <laughs> I got a buddy of mine, and and I was I was making a comment about some people that I know that that are new to the country, and they're like, bro. I'm not going to say bro the way they say bro, but they're like, <laughs> bro. <laughs> they were like, they're like, bro, what you do is you, you, when you go into a new country, you figure out the laws and you find out what is the biggest reward with the least risk, oh. you know? So I got cards. I got cards. <laughs> and we're going to pass out cards. The contact information will be here. So, what gives the biggest reward and what has the minimus, what has the biggest reward, smallest risk, okay? So right before marijuana, you know, in California it's legal, but right before marijuana was legal, they were like, well, marijuana is marijuana. The, marijuana I is think the now one. it's probably like meth because meth is so cheap to produce. And so that's I, such fucking crazy just to hear that comment. Like, yeah, really, meth, that, that's I, like, like the least crime right dude, now? Dude, there, there's, well, if you're talking about drugs, yeah. you know, heroin is has a huge negative stigma. Meth has a huge negative stigma, but like heroin is more costly to 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 produce. But but is that to the people selling it or to the people buying it or the law against them? Like what what okay, so think about this. What 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 is there that if they catch you you're fucked. Right now fentanyl. Fentanyl because fentanyl has that, that's I mean the it's, worst it's, one? it's it's well that's that's the political flavor right now, right? Yeah, you know, I had I have uh, I had a client that uh, got caught with two hundred eighty pounds of meth, um, and I was able. He spent one night in jail. Uh, so, you're the best one night attorney in I know. Two hundred eighty pounds. That's a that's a lot of that's a lot of meth. 
What's the what's the price? On? I have no. I have yeah, no like idea. I'm not. I'm not in the market, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what was it? I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> You're so silly. Yeah, but anyway, so I'm, I'm talking about. I'm talking about this this bro, uh, of him talking about like high yeah. high you know low risk yeah, high, high reward right. And, and so what did he say? I'm talking to this other buddy of mine, and well, he said marijuana. Okay, but I'm talking to my other buddy, and uh, he's he's a a man. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? man? And uh, he's like, oh, and I, I was like, what do you mean, oh? He goes, oh. I go, what do you mean? What's wrong, bro? Como estás? I, I go, what's up, chico? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I just got into some shit. I go, what do you mean, you got into some shit? He goes, yeah. So he he started he started dealing some uh, uh, white powder, okay, some baby powder, and he met a contact like in West Hollywood, and the contact in West Hollywood was like, yeah, man, you like well, you know, here you go. So they they paid him the money, and they go, look, Halloween's coming up, we're gonna need a little extra. So he did like two three transactions. Now on this next transaction, they order for like triple digits, like of whatever they were doing, triple or four, whatever, but more. He's driving and he's coming down uh, La Cienega. Uh, this on is this West Hollywood. On, West yeah, Hollywood. Yeah. So he's coming down La Cienega and he makes a right on Santa Monica. Right. And there's like a gas station he passes. Yeah. And as he passes the gas station, a cop car just randomly pulls up behind him. Oh, he got fucking and snitched fucking on. And lights him up. He got boop, snitched boop, on. Boop, 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 boop. Do I have a uh, police? No. no. He, oh, that's, no. A, that's good. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> He got snitched on. So the cops pull him over, and they're like, "What, what was the got, PC what for that?" What in the car? And he's like, "Why'd you pull me over?" Yeah, but what, what, what's the probable cause for that stop? Okay, which we're gonna ask you how to handle it. I'm gonna tell yeah, you how yeah. he handled okay. it, and you tell me the all attorney right, right. aspect. All right. So they're like, "What do you have in the car?" And he's like, "Why'd you stop me?" And they're like, uh, "We ran your plates, and we saw you have a suspended license." He goes, "Well, that's bullshit because it's under my mom's name, and uh, you know how would you see my license?" Right. You know. The, they're like, do you have anything in the car? You know, and he's like, I don't. They're like, please step out of the vehicle. <sighs> he's like, I, I don't feel comfortable, you know, stepping out of the vehicle. They're like, don't call your sergeant. Vehicle. You know, yeah, see, I want to hear this. <laughs> so, anyways, he steps out of the vehicle. They start searching the vehicle. Yeah. He's like, I don't give permission. He yells out, I'm not giving you permission. I'm not giving you permission to search my car. Right. They and they, they, they're searching. Search. And when they search, they find a, 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 a coffee uh, jar whatever and they find it and he's like i don't know what that is that's not mine you know i didn't give you permission this that 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 long story short you know they, he gets handcuffed he needs to get bailed out he gets bailed out covid comes in and uh you know the da's like well because i guess there wasn't a uh, probable cause for the stop they didn't have right to search right they kind of were like investigating for more evidence. They're fishing. They're fishing, and a year ended up going by. And I guess like it kind of just. So, so for a felony, they have three years to file. Uh, for a misdemeanor, it's two years. But um, there needs to be probable cause to make the stop. So, if you have tinted windows all the way around, probable cause. If you have something hanging from your window or your mirror, excuse me, like a. Air rear view mirror. Air, yeah, your rear view mirror. Like an air fresh cleaner. Um, that's probable cause. That's illegal. Right? They don't exercise that stuff uniformly, meaning that, like, they don't, you know, if you, for example, I had. Okay, cool. Um, I had a, like, when I was growing up, I had a 67 Volkswagen that didn't have a front, front license plate. And I got in trouble for not having the front license plate. And as the guy, as the cop was. I, I also got in trouble for not having a front windshield, but that's another story. Because I, I was getting the car painted, and I was making my way to Earl's shop, and this cop called sense. me. He was like, do you realize, son, you don't have a... I was like, no, <laughs> really? You know, like, <laughs> this is a bug. It's right in front of you. <laughs> like, um, but as I was getting checked out, you know, there was Porsches and BMWs driving around that didn't have that front mm -hmm. license plate. And I looked at the cop. I was like, seriously, you're going to fuck me for this front license plate when you're not uniformly, mm -hmm. you know, uh, putting this crime on other people? So you can beat those things. Um, and probable cause is the way to go. So if you were in doing an activity that is, is, you know, not sanctioned by law, you need to make sure you're not breaking two crimes and just one, right? So you're not driving around with a, your windows tinted. You're not driving around with a loud car. 
you're not driving around with a suspended license or a DUI or no license and it's registered to you. So you need to, you know, make sure what you're doing. Uh, but it's all about probable cause. And if there is no probable cause, we can beat it. It's called a 1538.5. It's a motion to suppress based on improper collection of evidence. And that's what happened to your friend. Basically, they had no probable cause. There's a snitch. So you should, you know, not deal with those people again because they're snitching on him. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, this this goes back to the low risk, high reward. Right. So coke is, is not, coke is coke has never been. Right. Coke is never, it's always weed, a felony. Weed, you can like move, there was a time before it was legal, you can move pounds. Right. And, and I, I still caught, have clients moving like, moving pounds and getting caught, um, you know, in Bakersfield. Oh, uh, Bakersfield is like the capital. So I, I used to be a public defender in Bakersfield, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, that's not a good place to get stopped. Um, but what they're doing in Bakersfield is if you're going up, that was the 99, they are positioning cops with canines at the beginning of the 99. And if the dog gets a sniff of something passing, they have another cop up the way a little bit that'll pull you over. But I heard that's bullshit too. That is bullshit. They can bullshit. control the cops or they can control the dogs. That is bullshit. And I'm, I'm going to beat this case. Uh, but I do have a case like that right now. Um, and there's absolutely no probable cause for it. They can't be sniffing everybody. Like whether or not, you know, Yes, they can bring dogs to a stop that has PC for it, um, but they cannot have a dog sniff in order to create the PC on a fucking highway. Like that's not okay. Um, and I'm going to beat this case. Well, you you, you might I I, I got to remember where I saw this, but I was watching a documentary, and it was a legit dude that pulled out like $85,000 from his savings account. He had bank receipts. He had fucking, you know, everything. He was like a military guy and he was traveling from the East coast to the West coast. And he, he got pulled over Mm -hmm. randomly. And they're like, do you have anything in the car? He's like, well, officer, I have money. You know, it's my money. I, the documents for my money and you know, blah, 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 the cases. (laughs) Anyways. So they, they ended up bringing a, um, they're like, well, this is a lot of money to be traveling with. This is not normal. He's like, I have documents. Yeah, that's not it's, enough to have a crime. Like, yes. unless there's other. No, things no, I involved. know, but I'm, I'm just giving you, I'm just giving you the reference on this case because this was a huge deal. Yeah, they brought a canine. The canine smelled drugs, which they're saying was bullshit too, because ninety nine point nine percent of fucking money has cocaine or has substances on it because it's just been traveled through it. Just sure. Period. Sure. Uh, they took his money. The guy lost his mind. Like, what the fuck? This, that, that, that. He ended up suing the police station. Won the case, obviously, with flying. Did he? Has, he got. He's got his money. Oh, he got his money because it was. It, it was all proven. It was all documented. Like the right. guy was legit. But what happened? Let me ask you: Was so, he a white kid or was he a no, Mexican no, he, or was I, he I, I, Hispanic? I, was he black? The, the way that he looked to me, he was either Mexican or he was Native American. So um, that, that, you know, that, that could have been racially profiling kind of stuff. No, no. Right? So what they do, well, here's here's what the case unfolded to. What state was this in? This was uh, Arizona at the time. Oh, fuck Arizona. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Scottsdale. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a it, police state. As soon as, you, as soon as you drive in there, there's a big American flag. So, that tells you. <laughs> so so here's here's what was happening. What was happening is, is that Arizona knows a lot of people were taking weed and transporting it to the East Coast and then grabbing cash and taking it back home right. to California. Right. So randomly, they would just pick out fucking cars of whoever they wanted and they would take this money because there was no way of proving that the fucking money existed. And then they didn't keep, exist. Yeah, right. And they and, would keep the money. It's and a they tax. Would keep the money. It's a they, tax. They, would they tax taxed it. his ass. Right. Where... With this guy, it was like, no, bitch, this is my fucking money. I have documents and bank statements and this, that, that, that. But because it was like so much money, they're like, oh, yeah, all right, let's bring the canines. They said they used a, a signal. The, the cops have a signal for canines to react or bark. You know, that was used. Uh, they said it had the drugs on the money, which, which they actually, it. wait, 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 wait. Are you saying that? that they had evidence come out saying that they actually used a device in order to trigger the dog. Not or a is device. That, is that not, just n- not a, a defi- thought? No, 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 no. Like, like, I'll, it actually came out in evidence it, in court. It came out that in evidence in court 
that police officers have wow. a a uh, a signal or wow. a fucking command wow. a command that's all i have to say that, is wow that they can have the dog react like <laughs> you know like yeah 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 like all you got to do is convince the dog to bark right like, right you know like don't bark yeah sh- bark. Like, yeah got a signal some hand signs, yeah, calm down know? put them in handcuffs put them yeah. fucking in handcuffs right. shut the fuck up you right. have the right to we're going to look in your car we're going to search your car now cuz the, the dog know? had a hit so so they had, the, this is why, like, if you have a case like this, trust me, it's it's, it's worth looking up. This it was like on the History Channel That's or fucking something. That's really. But this this happened uh, like three or four years ago. And it was your buddy. No, no, no. This is just something. Oh, I was just something watching. you watched. Yeah, you read. Yeah, it was just yeah, man. You got to be careful. Um, you got to be careful, especially if you know. Yeah, it's not. My grandfather told me this. My grandfather said, "Look, Robert, if 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 the police, if you got to deal with the police, like." Whatever they say, just don't even, they're not going to help you. They're not going to do nothing. They're not your friend. The only person, this is his words, the only person that's going to help you is the judge. That's it. Okay? When you're out in the street, they have minimal well, well, and goals. I'll help you. I'll help you. And hopefully I can, I can sway have, the judge. And the, 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 but the, 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 problem, the problem is, is that you got to understand, man. I, I've been around. I've traveled. I've been many places. I, I haven't had somebody I can like really rely on or count on as a fucking attorney. So it's yeah. only a fucking nightmare because it's one of those things that you don't think about until until shit hits the fan. Until shit hits the fan, and or, then where or do you go? Just you Google happens. criminal attorney, and you get all the people that pay for obscene amounts of clickbait kind of things. And that's not you're not you you know you're going to attorney mills and and. Um, you know, that's why I, you know, I, I, I'm a motorcycle rider, so I'm trying to provide service to the motorcycle community. Um, and yeah, I'm, you know, I'm here. What What's the, um, it, when you say the motorcycle community, like what, what are your expertise? What, what do you want to focus on the most? So, um, <sighs> I'm very good at criminal law. Very good at criminal law. But what, what is what does that mean? Because like for me, it's like criminal law is like everything that's bad. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> I'm Pretty I uh, yes everything that you do that is wrong. I am good at fixing. Um, I also do. Uh, so right now I have a multi million dollar tickets. I do oh. tickets. So I do tickets uh, on the cheap. However, you know it is several appearances typically. So. Um, harassment. I do, I do so. I do tickets. I do domestic violence. I do uh, DUIs. I do. I'm not really into restraining orders, that, like civil restraining orders. You know, there are restraining orders that come out through DVU. It's called a CPO, a criminal protective order, um, that I can get fixed if we have cooperation from the victim. Uh, I do a lot of drug possession cases. A lot of a lot of transportation cases. I have a lot of marijuana cases where there I uh, have you know immigrants coming and being told, "Hey, it's okay to farm this stuff," and then it ends up that they're farming on somebody else's land. And what did I remember? Right, I've had a lot of cases in like Lancaster, especially there. I don't know what they're doing out there, but there's just know. so much land over there that well, it's like just random land. land. I like, literally had somebody who was in a stolen trailer. Li- Living in a stolen trailer that he did not know. There was a gun in the trailer. He was on land that wasn't owned by the people he was saying he was working for. And there was cash in the trailer, which means, you know, conspiracy, which conspiracy to commit a crime, which is a felony. And then all the marijuana growth stuff. So, you know, but I was able to get that dismissed. Um, So I have a lot of immigration clients. Uh, and I try to fix, because obviously, you know, we're in a world today where, you know, before we were accepting all the immigrants, and now it's, you know, build a wall, right? And I'm trying to help these people. So there's, you know, for DACA recipients. So you, you, you deal with that? Oh, really? Yeah, for DACA recipients, you know, I deal with a lot of with, you know, just them getting DUIs itself is... De- well, forget the DUIs for a second. That's, like, but that's I, deportable, and yeah. they'll lose their DACA status based yeah, on a but, DUI. But, but I've heard, uh, I, I think it's DACA. The, uh, you know, the dreamers I, I, I've, I've known, you know, people that have come here, they were brought at a young age, three, four, five years old. Now they're, 
you know, working. Right. They commit taxes. one crime and all of a sudden no, they're no, here for... No, they, no, they, they don't even commit crime. Now they're just really trying to get as legit as possible. And, and they and they can't, you know, like it, it's, it's very difficult or there's a way to... Oh, yes. Well, if you need immigration, I, I have immigration attorneys that I talk to re- like very frequently. Um, so I definitely can refer people to immigration attorneys. But there is a path to become righteous in the U.S. Um, I, I just published an episode today, you know, and, and, and these, these people, Bach. Uh, oh, I love Bach. Those guys yeah. are cool. Oh, yeah, just released their episode today. Hi, Bach. Hi, Bach. Hi, Remy. Laura. Yeah, they're great people. They're, they're they, nice. They, they spent a fortune. Uh, bike shed. The people at Bike Shed, they spent a fortune, and they had to jump hoops. And, 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 and I've had conversations where, you know, practically ass-kissing was necessary. Oh, man, the, the immigration process here is <laughs> fucked. And, and, the, uh. and, and, and then it's crazy. <laughs> That's why I don't practice it. I refer that shit out. Yeah, it's crazy because you think it's just like, oh, you know, you know, South America, you know, whatever the case is. Or the no, Caribbean. it's everywhere. It's everywhere. But it's you're everywhere. English. You're, English, you're London, the French. Same stuff. It doesn't matter what color or, or nationality you are. It's, you're going through the same steps. So, um, yeah. What, what's your, what would be your expertise that you take pride in that you're like, fuck, I got that? Criminal law. Criminal. I'm a criminal attorney. I'm good at my fucking job. Um, I, I know how to, how, how fast do motorcycle accidents turn into like criminal law? You know, motorcycle accidents don't really come into criminal law. What, what that's personal injury stuff. And I do a lot of that. And I actually have, I have a multi million dollar case right now with Lyft. Uh, we've settled a Uber case for almost a million dollars. Um, you know, I, and it's sad to see, you know, we see our friends go down and it's, it's, it's very sad. And it happens too often. So, you know, a lot of people don't know. And those billboards that you see, those are uh, kind of attorney mills, you know, where they're not going to treat you uh, right and, and kind of lead you on a little bit versus myself. I'm a boutique. It's me. It's myself. Uh, I do have a very smart uh, JD working for a j- jurist doctor working with me. Uh, that's been doing PI for 35 years. Um, but, yeah, we we win. Uh, we litigate. That's what we do. Uh, and, you know, I try to really go out of my way to help motorcyclists, um, especially anybody that comes through BMC. I try to give them a discount, obviously, and I have. Uh, and, you know, I've... In the amount of, uh, I'm going to say that I've been very successful, to be honest, with, with, with criminal law, with personal injury stuff. I haven't, I haven't provided a result to a client where they're like, well, fuck, you fucked me. Yeah. Um, I'm shaving years off people's lives uh, or off their sentences, and they're, all my clients are grateful, um, and I work my ass off. Um, and it's a fun job and I, you know, I've been a rebel all my life and fighting the man is, is in my blood. Um, and I'm good at it. You know, I, I, I get the results. So, uh, yeah, there, there, there's a part of me that's like, fuck man, being an attorney be so fucking cool. It's not but, though. But it's not. No, no, I know. I know. <laughs> but, but I, I've, I've had my experiences dealing with the courts and, and oh, going man. to court. And I, I, I see the same fucking attorneys with, with it's a small like, world. So it's a small it's world, a small but, world. But, but I see the same fucking attorneys and they're holding these, these, these crates of files. Yeah. That's how I used to be when I was a public <laughs> defender. Just like. Literally, it's it wasn't so even a many. bag; it was a crate. It's like every fucking day, man. I've f- touched, I've touched over a thousand cases. Uh, literally, if you if if I log into like the LA court system, it'll say like a thousand sixty two cases that I, just in LA County, right? So like, it's just a ton of cases, and it's all the time, and um, it's great for business. But you know, no, it's it's great for business, but like. Like, there's just something daunting about it. Like, it, it takes a special breed to do it. It does. You know, I've, I've had to... Uh, anxiety is a, a thing that, you know, attorneys had to deal with. And, and they have to deal with it, hopefully, productively, without drinking or doing other things. Um, and I'm able to handle it. 
I am, I am able to handle it. Uh, yeah, I'm built for this stuff. It's interesting. It's really now, interesting. Now, what, what, what made you um, get into this career? Is it a family thing? My daddy. Your dad. <laughs> no, so my dad was a, uh, he went to law school. He went to New York Law School. He got his JD. Wasn't able to pass the bar, unfortunately. Um, he took it five times. There was a plethora of issues uh, that plagued his his chances to to pass the bar, and then um, and then my parents got divorced. And he what is it like multiple choice or something? So there's a lot of shit, dude. So it's so they have a day of essays where they give you a fact pattern. It's like called what's up perf- essay performance day. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. No, so it's like uh they give you like a fact pattern and they make you analyze it. So you have to write, there's three different essays you have to write and you have to analyze every issue. And then there's something called the multi-state. The multi-state is something that every state kind of tests on. Those are multiple choice. And honestly, there's always two answers that are right. Uh, So it's really fucking hard. Um, I was able to pass it on my first attempt, which thank God, um, study my ass off. Uh, no, the, the, the reason I'm asking is, is I'm asking more like, um, you know, like the real estate test. It, it, it's not oh, necessarily... I took that test in 30 minutes. Did that you? test is easy. Wait, but, but, the, the, <laughs> that, but that's my point. My point is, is because we're talking about, you're like, you brought up your dad not, not passing it. And then we're talking about these tests. And here's my problem with tests. The real estate test, I know for a fact that it's just memorizing shit. It's just... Right, it, you it, just got to take... It's not... Yeah. It's not information. It's not knowledge. It's the question for this is answer for this. So if you can memorize that, then you're good. You pass it instantly. Well, f- so for the bar, it's it's issue. So my spotting. question is for bar, is it that kind of? Test? It's issue spotting. So here's this issue, right? There's you know there's there's facts, 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 and then it comes up with an issue, and then there's facts, 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 issue, facts, 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 issue, and you just literally need to know the issue. And how to analyze that issue. And if, so I took Barbary. I was a, so when I went to law school, I was able to secure a rep position for Barbary, which means that they gave me Barbie for free. Um, so I just pushed that thing to the limit. I would get up at eight o'clock, do my studying until noon, work out at one o'clock. I'd start again. And you just, li- it's literally just repetition and it's being able to call, recall rules. So you see something, here's the rule. And you just have to literally regurgitate that onto the paper and then regurgitate your analysis of that and then shoehorn facts into it. Well, this fact fits here. It could go this way or this way, but it militates this way. So we're going to go with this answer. Next fact, next issue this way, this way, and that's all you got to do. And for anybody taking the bar, make sure that you put on headers because the, the the people that are reading aren't going to read your fucking paragraph. They're going to read your headers. If, you're, if your headers are analyzing every issue, they're going to skip over it and you're going to pass. Uh, and that's what I did, and I passed. Um, let's get into um, knowledge. Knowledge is power. Uh, I'm riding my bike. I'm... I, I see lights, boop, 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 boop. I look down, I'm fucking 80 on a 55. Slow down. How, how do you so, handle so, this? So, so, so you, my you, advice you, like, is... Fuck you, officer. No, 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 you can't no, no, no. fucking... No, no, no. My, <laughs> my advice kidding, is do to um, be super nice. Kill them with kindness. Ask them why they're stopping you. If they tell you you were speeding, you just be nice and say, yes, your officer, here you go. And you shut the fuck up. Don't say anything. Um, well, I was just making, just shut the fuck up, uh, yeah. and give you me your idea. De la boca. Yeah, guide de la boca way. <laughs> um, and it'll, it'll work out. Once you start trying to really tr- like negotiate with them, they'll start to pick up on another thing. So if you're drinking and like, Hey man, I wasn't really going that fast. Uh, they're going to be like, and you, the more you talk, the more smell they get, you know? Yeah. And Oh, what's that? Is that multa? <laughs> is that, is that? Red breast? What is that? Yeah. Um, and then you're fucked. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you inside know, inside joke, inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, especially nowadays, COVID. I would put my mask on. 
to be honest. Like, officer, I don't. All right, you heard it here. Put I, your mask on. I don't feel safe uh, with you breathing on me right now, so I'm gonna put my mask on. When's the last time you did a COVID test? Right. Uh, but I wouldn't really give them a whole lot to work with. Don't try to talk to them. Give them your stuff and leave because. The more you get into it, the more they can get. And that's what they want. That's why they ask you questions. Hey, where are you going today? Uh, how was your day? Where, where have you been? Don't say shit. You say, you know what? I don't want to discuss my day today. What are you stopping me for? Speeding? Great. You need my license and registration? Yes, here it is. Thank you and move on. Um, because if you start to try to justify to them, they're self-righteous. Uh, cops are self-righteous. They think they're in the right all the time, and they think that you're a bad person. Um, cops think I'm bad? They think everybody's bad. Bastards. Fuckers. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, and uh, call me. I'll help you out. 818-384-1128. Damn, do you have a website? I do have a website. <laughs> What's it's, the website? It's uh, Forrest Miller Law. Wait, yeah, it's ForrestMillerLaw.com. Is that Forrest with one R or it's two R's? F, two R's, like Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. F-O-R-R-E-S-T-M-I-L-L-E-R, like the beer, law.com. I um, seen your business card, motherfucker. I'm just making sure you let them know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, you don't want to give them a whole lot because they're going to... They're, they're going to take, you know, the whole good cop, bad cop thing is, is well, it's, 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 it's they their, legitimately it's practice job. that stuff. Yeah, it's their job. And, and they're all muscle heads. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, I, I, I was telling you before we started recording, I, I, I just can't believe how much manipulation or lies cops do. And they're actually, allowed to do. Well, it's yeah, allowed, which is crazy because I was talking to another buddy of mine. He's a he's a he's an attorney for for some city. And he was like, you know what? It, it, it is ridiculous. And they've tried to open up a lawsuit against police officers for lying or manipulating to, you know, get information out. But the court but, upholds it. But it, it, it keeps getting upheld. So the court, the court you, upholds it. You, you, you they can to, lie to you. You need to you be can't careful, lie. guys. You need, yeah. you need to shut the, you need to like really be quiet. Yeah. And, I don't know. Um, and why, why, what, what is the study or the statistics of why people volunteer so much information? Because fuck, I, I, you know even, what? I've, I, I've even done it. I've like, I would wow. assume that they're, they're just trying to explain their way out of it. And I don't even think it's that. Well, I think it's nerves. I think it's people don't know how to act. I think it's, uh, I think, oh, I think they're trying to get out of it. They're, they think it's their parents and they're just making up excuses. And that's not how it goes. The excuses that you're giving them is giving them more facts and more, more things to hold up against you. And the more you talk, the more you slur, the more you smell the more they have against you. so Okay, so I'm going to give you a scenario. I, I just got pulled over. I haven't been pulled over in fucking no, I haven't, years. Oh, I haven't been pulled over in like a decade, thank God. Dude, I haven't been pulled over in a decade. Easy. Like, it's, it's been so long. And right now, I was, this happened. In the Tesla? In the Tesla. This happened two First weeks off, ago. fuck your Tesla. Why? As a motorcyclist, fuck your Tesla. Why? What the fuck is this? Because Nazi Teslas bullshit? are the worst drivers Right no, now, Prius they're so just no, 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 no. You no, guys no, no, are the no, no, you guys no. are the new no, no. Prius. No, no. Let, let, let me tell you, you guys something. are distracted let me tell you. by that goddamn when, when, screen. When you have, a, you're when entitled because you your car so is so funny expensive. You say that because if you listen, fuck to my, Tesla drivers. If you listen to my podcast, <laughs> this is what I've been saying for years about Prius riders, and there's no fucking way that Dude. I'm a fucking like. You're talking about the people driving the cheapy <laughs> Teslas. Like, no, I'm not talking about the, te- the. You know what? The only people that I know, or not know, but this the, hate when, when that you have, when I, I am talking Prius about Tesla like, S's, fuck Priuses. Those guys don't fuck around. They're really good. But you're talking about any other Model Threes, the Y, the X, the Z, the G. I don't know what the fuck they are. But if you're in, not in an S, you're an asshole. Oh, you see, I'm an <laughs> S. I'm in an S. You see, we're good. But. I you're get, in the nest. Oh in yeah. Nest oh, okay. Oh, yeah, come I'm on, sorry. Bro. Come on. Get the fuck out of here. Come on, man. You fucking kidding me, bro? Plaid edition. What the plaid? fuck? Oh shit! You gotta take me in that thing. You gotta plaid. Oh, bro. That. Uh, cheetah uh, mode. We'll, we'll, we'll take go. the podcast mobile. Let's go. I got fucking cars pulled and over. coffee. Cars and coffee. I gotta start doing that. I want to do that with the fucking bikes. You know? Yeah, let's bikes, do it. Bikes and coffee. Yeah, yeah. Um, but dude, I got pulled over three times in my life. Of driving the exact oh. same way. Okay? And this is how I get pulled over. Speed of traffic. 
cop car behind me. No idea. It's fucking midnight. Fucking, I can't see shit. On my way to Vegas, light spark up. Boop, boop. I'm like, oh, fuck. They passed what, wait, me. Wait, wait, wait. What car was it? Was it a Charger? I think it was a Charger. Okay. This is Barstool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, you know, it's always good to yeah, yeah. what kind of cops these are. Oh, I got on video. I got on video because the Tesla records all of it, right? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he passes me, turns on lights. I slow down. What the mm-hmm. fuck? He passes you. Passes me, goes, pulls over the car in front of me, and I back up like, the fuck out of here, bro. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't fucking. That's and he me. waits for me. And I'm like, mm, let me go around you. And he's like, no, you too, dude. And I'm like, there's no way you pulled over the car in front of me. You can't double dip, you know? They do that. He's like, yo, like, pull over. And I was like, fuck, man. And he pulls me over. Anyways, I'm watching the video because the car recorded everything, right? And there's like three, four cars in front of me. So it's a one lane. It's a fucking one lane because there's traffic all over the fucking place. Uh-huh. It was on a Friday. And I'm looking at the video, and I'm like, dude, I'm going to speed of traffic. I'm not going faster. I didn't pass anybody up. I didn't do but, anything. But how fast were you going, though? Uh, he said 70 on a 55. Oh, because it was construction. No, there was no fucking construction. There has dude. to be. If you're going to Vegas and it's 55, that No, no, because it's the back roads. It wasn't the main roads. Oh, so you're going through, past, it, through it was the 14? It was, it, I think it was like pa- it was a past the 14, and then it was like one of the ones between the 14 to the fucking 15. Right. Like on, when you're getting yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah. That, uh, I forgot what road it yeah, is. But it, yeah, but it, it's that it's that one road that, that goes like, across the thing. Yeah, and it goes. Vroom, vroom. Yeah. So he pulls me over, but I'm looking at the video. And I'm like, dude, I get it. I can do fucking school, you know, whatever, because I I haven't you know had any any issues. But I'm looking at the video. I'm like, that's fucked up because there's literally you could see like four or five cars, speed of traffic, and and you know. So there was no constr- Well, the speed limit was 55. Yeah, speed limit was 55. Anyway, so, so he, and, and I was like, yo, come on, dude. And he's like, oh, well, that's a catch-22. I'll tell you how and I, I'm like, how fuck I would, your catch-22, you know? But <laughs> I would tell you how I would, I would go about that case. I would kick it out twice. You'd kick it out twice? Twice. <laughs> and then up here. And then most of the time the cop doesn't show up if you kick it out a long time because they don't remember. And also, you know, some of them get paid overtime for doing it. Some of them are like, fuck it. That's my day off. And they don't show up. I've honestly only had like two tickets show up. But if you show up, you got to show up. If you show up, you got to show up. And then you're back to being like, hey, I'm going to do traffic school. Okay. Okay. That's it. But the thing is, you you know, for me to do those appearances, it costs money. Right. So. Right. Especially you know, when it's in Barstow. Yeah. If it's in fucking Barstow. Because then you're and travel and yeah. travel there, so, travel back. Right. So, uh, yeah. I charge about 500 bucks per, per appearance for tickets. But it would be probably one. One appearance. To Barstow. To Barstow. Right. And then if he doesn't show up, it just gets kicked out. It gets dismissed. And you're good to go. If if, if it doesn't, some some judges will let you reduce it. Some judge, So these judges are not judges. They're pro temps. They're attorneys that, that, that want to be judges, and they don't know the fucking law. And they're like, well, I don't really have discretion to reduce that. And then, like, well, actually, you do under you know, PC this. And uh, you can get them to do it, and sometimes you can't get them to do it. But at the end of the day, you're still at traffic school. Or it gets dismissed, and it's gone, and you don't have to pay the $432 fee that you got. Yeah, I, don't, I don't even know. Dude, I, I, I haven't been pulled over in so long. The guy gave me a printout. I was like, you guys are printing shit now oh, from your cars? That's out. fucking that's the, magic, that's dude. Like, <laughs> it was literally like, Meh. I was like, this is fucking beautiful. What is this? Uh, like, am I so taking, professional. Taking my, my order or what? Dude, I used to get fucking tickets. Like, I, I think I think attorneys had to, like, take classes. Of, well, I, I, um, pharmacists have to take classes on how to read prescriptions because doctors shitty fucking oh yeah no like you can't I don't understand why they just don't write them nicer I and there's like, oh I, I have the explanation why so uh, a lot a lot <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I, have, I have a lot of doctor friends uh, so so a lot of these people have beautiful handwriting but when you take uh, medical school when you take med school the your, the information coming in is so fucking rapid. That's what you talk. Well, you're, you're talking today, and we're talking like why it's been like that for the last past 50 years. Yeah, yeah. When, when it starts, uh, when people start taking their fucking notes, they write in a way that only no, there's they can no way. In they, law they school, there would be no way for me to write shit. I would not. I, like, if I didn't have my laptop, I'd be fucked. 
Yeah. It would not be in that <laughs> Yeah, I, I, went, I went to Pepperdine. I was working on my master's there. Yeah. I did Pepperdine's everything on my fucking school. tablet. Yeah, yeah, you got to. Yeah. It, it was the only way. I tried to write, and I was like, this is ridiculous. No. There's like, the, my you're writing, you're writing goes to shit. There's people that would write, like, the tests and stuff like that, and you'd be like, dude, what are you doing? Like, it's going to take you an extra hour to write this test. And I only writ, wrote on one test, and I got an A, but that was not, it was unplanned. I didn't realize I had a test that day, so. Okay, let, let's talk about uh, hypothetical uh, scenarios. Ridiculous shit. Hypothetical shit. Yeah, I'm riding my motorcycle, and I hit somebody. You a hit pedestrian. somebody. I, you, pedestrian. Pedestrian. Yeah. You better have it insurance. It just popped up. You better have insurance. Well, okay, our, our, what, time is the, what time of the day is it? Uh, it's fucking, uh, what's crazy? I don't know. Tell me. I'm I don't know. Either in the morning? A.M. I was going to work. Well, okay. It's, it's 8.36. 36. 8.36, yeah. okay. A. A. Is it somebody that looks put together or are they homeless? Um, that, that's that's a consideration here. They, they're they wearing a suit. Oh, you're and fucked. a red tie. You're fucked. No, you better have insurance. That's that. Like if you hit the guy, is he in a crosswalk? Or is no, he? No, he's on a one way. It's a one way for you and he was crossing the one way. Like let's say Pasadena. Uh-huh. They have okay. one way. They have or one way. downtown. Ways. They have one ways. We're just making you know, shit. you know, in California, pedestrians have the right of way no matter what. It's not Texas, so you know, if somebody's not in a crosswalk in Texas, you can hit them. It's their fault. Here, that's not the case. So, uh, okay, I have insurance. Everything's good, but for some reason, I have a gun on me, and I'm like, "Fuck! What do I do with my gun?" Uh, well, the gun doesn't really matter because it's not really pertinent to the issue. That's that would it's be in my saddlebag. Is it loaded? Or are the bullets separated? It's loaded. Do you have a CCW? <laughs> Not in California. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the cops come or no? Uh, I stopped. Not me. They were just. It's hypothetical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the motorcycle hits, and then I, I kind of balanced it. And as I balance it, uh, I finally stop upright, and I'm like a block and a half down. Okay. And everybody's running to the guy. Okay. Well, as long as you stop and go back to the scene, you're good. Uh, I'm assuming one so of those. So if I make a U-turn to go back to him. And on the one way? On the one way. That's a Or should I go around the block? That's a ticket. I just leave my bike where it is and walk my ass over oh. there. Because um, people panic. People don't know what the fuck to do. Right. Well, first off, you should not never leave the scene of an accident uh, until everything's, until your business is done, whether a cop comes or not. As long as you exchange information. Um, correct information you can take off. Now, um, I stop. Guys hurt. I have decent insurance, which that's another thing that I talked about on this podcast. Update or upgrade your insurance. Yeah, like, you, you it, cannot it's, have it's, a minimum policy of fifteen thirty because that like it's it's, it's not gonna ha- it's it's not gonna work. The You're difference between like a fifteen thirty and a fucking whatever five hundred or a million, whatever the case, hundred thousand, yeah. A hundred thousand. It's not that much more. It's more, it's but it's not that much more. No. Like get better fucking insurance, right? And get non motorist insurance. Just uninsured, in uninsured motorist. motorists, especially if you're a biker, because um, you don't have a cage to protect you. Yeah, you know, so that's gonna help it's in terms of you know getting more medical help. Um, so, and it's sad to say. So let's let let's say this. I, I we we got a decent insurance. This guy was rushing and he jumped in front of the bike. Okay, whatever. So it's your fault. You go back, you give him your insurance, and you can take off. And that's it. You're not going to get a, unless the guy dies, you know, or. That's my question. When does it become like a real criminal thing? Like if the guy dies. If the guy dies. If, if the guy dies, it's, it, it's a criminal thing because there shouldn't be a reason for somebody dying. Um, it would be a, a vehicular manslaughter which I have one of those cases as well. Um, you know, if you're at night, if it's at night, you know, one, two o'clock in the morning and you hit somebody, hopefully, you know, un, you know, not hopefully, but hopefully the guy's fucked up and is under the influence. And you say, well, he wasn't, you know, especially if it's not in a crosswalk. Yeah. Like, hey, well, you know, he wasn't of sound mind and it's not my fault. It's his fault because he stepped out into Oncoming traffic. Which, what happens then? The insurance still covers it, right? So your insurance should should protect you, right? Right. They're they're obligated to protect you. You don't really right. need. But you it. get you get points if it's your fault versus no points if it's his fault. Right. 
Right. And the points thing can be, you can go to traffic school and, and whatnot for that kind of stuff. Um, but it's, it's very important that you at least stay and convey your information because if you don't, it's going to cause a lot more problems and make you look like you're guilty, like it was your fault. But, you know, I have a case right now where this guy walked out into somebody and the guy was high on Coke and alcohol and it was two o'clock in the morning. Um, and the guy died. Uh, and it's his fault because he was high on Coke and drunk at and crossed at basically a railroad crossing behind a railroad crossing, which if you, you know, you know, a railroad crossing and it goes yeah. up and down. You're behind there. You can't, you can't see that person. How is the person supposed to be liable to see you, right? So um, I feel confident about that case. Um, but, yeah, you just you need to make sure that you do what is expected of a citizen, and that is to stay and, and transfer your information. After that, we can deal with it. If you don't do that stuff, you're going to be fucked a little bit more. Uh, we can still deal with it. Um, depends on your age. It just, you know, it's case by case basis, but, um, there's like no case alike. Well, there are, there are some cases alike. Really? And yeah. That's why they have, you know, case precedent where, you know, a, a case comes up and, and, uh, and, um, uh, a court will rule in a certain way and then it gets appealed and then, then the court either upholds it or changes it. And you look to those cases to find out if, you know, when you have a similar case, how to react or how the court should react. And then you can make the arguments based on that. Yeah. What, what's going on with the, um, the people committing crimes and they just get booked and released? Like, is that still happening? You so, well, first off, everybody's talking shit about Gascon right now. First off. Um, He's Cuban, huh? Is he? Yeah, Gascon. Oh, yeah. That's the rumor. Look, I don't know. he was in San Francisco. San Francisco is not a place to really idolize, given that they've had the same issues f- since the '60s. They have too much homelessness. Yeah. These homeless people call themselves hip, like hippies. They're not hippies. They're just no, they're fucking homeless, homeless and yeah. drug users. Well, it um, was it was the hippity cap, hippity. Hippity, hippity, hoppity, hippity, 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 hoppity, but you know, but it was uh, the hippie capital of the world, right? In but the 70s. George Harrison went out there in the '60s uh, to find the hippie movement and came back and said, "Y'all are fucking homeless. You're not hippies. You're just homeless." Yeah. And you know, growing or not growing, but uh, going to law school in San Francisco and being around that stuff, right? That's that that that's what's going on. There's too much homelessness and it's due to drug use. Um, and Gascon, you know, you can't. Yeah, you, Havana, Cuba. Havana, Cuba. Yeah. You, there it is. There it is. You have a lot of people that, you know, this is not not a, you know, in and out door, right? And there needs to be rehabilitation of these people. You can't expect a drug user to go in, come out after being in, in jail. Anybody who's been in jail knows that that's not a place to rehab. It's a place to learn how to be a better criminal. Right, because everybody's all or fucking, an attorney, yeah, <laughs> a jailhouse <laughs> just kidding, attorney. Just kidding, just kidding. Not, not with actual <laughs> fucking. You know, uh, I have a doctorate. I'm a doctor. No, I'm not. I do have a doctorate though. Um, so, Gascon, Gascon, like, so he's coming here to do this stuff, and is at a time where the nation literally has unprecedented crime going on. It's all over the nation. It's and it's because of COVID and this recession we're going through. I don't, you know, I don't care what fucking Biden says. We're in a recession right now. Yeah. Um. When 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 you know the Feds come out and say, hey, we're going to raise this, you know, point seven five for three months in a row. Whatever they did, that's a recession. Sounds uh, very political. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, <laughs> no politics here. So, um. Gascon releasing prisoners. So is it right or wrong? Gascon, People talking shit about. So it. look, if you're a violent criminal, your ass should be in jail. If you're not a violent criminal and you're, you know, slanging marijuana or uh, meth, uh, the, 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 those are non-violent crimes. And 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 sure, you should stop doing that. But when you have uh, 
the prison population is like 235%. They're over capacity right now because they're just fucking locking up everybody, right? So people that are non are, are they are they locking up everybody? Because my, my understanding, the, the public eye, I'm going to represent the public eye for a second, and, and you're in the legal system, is if you commit a crime and it's a misdemeanor, they're going to book you and release you. Well, it depends on the crime. One and it's a misdemeanor. A right. misdemeanor is not like first. But off, a DUI is a misdemeanor. Sure, but your fourth is not right, and there's still people not going away for those. You know, you have because they're nonviolent. They're out. They're they're not beating or hurting people. Well, I'll give you an example. What about what about the uh, the? Okay, let's talk about this case. Let's the, we got a case study now. Uh, what was it? Nine o'clock in the morning. This happened about two weeks ago. Some kid went on a one way. And hit the police officers. They mm-hmm. were running in the morning. Remember that? No, no, I didn't hear about oh, that. Oh, you didn't hear about this? No. So there's there's a a police. Uh, Where was this at? Boot camp. This uh-huh. was. Um, oh yes, in Orange County or whatever it was, right? Yeah, like borderline of the county. Right, right, right. There's right. like a police camp. So there, that there, guy was that, 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 that I thought that guy was like aiming for them. I knew what they were doing. So that's violent. That's violent. They released him the next day. What? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm that saying. That wasn't LA County, though. It, it, no, it wasn't no, LA so County. No, so you can't because say they had, they had different county. No, no, I'm not. I'm not picking on my. County. No, no, no. I know, I know. But I'm just saying for people who are like, oh, Gascon is not doing this right. No, no, no. That no, wasn't no, in no, fucking no, LA no, County. No, no, that no, wasn't a different were, county. Nobody's taking sides or not sides just because he's Cuban. You know, like, <laughs> that's not because he's Cuban. You know, it's no, because no, everybody's no, getting robbed. But, no, no. What I, what I'm <laughs> saying is, is. I'm gonna jump to I'm gonna jump to San Francisco real quick. Okay, San Francisco creates a law saying if you steal under nine hundred ninety nine dollars, you're not gonna get arrested. I get it. The jails are full. They're fucking packed. It's a fucking mess. But why are they going on TV and promoting it and saying, "Hey guys, if you steal anything under nine hundred ninety nine dollars," they went you're not on TV and promoted that. Oh, it was on the newspapers. It was on the news. It was all over the fucking place. Now, if you go on YouTube and you look at criminals stealing stuff from uh, Walmart, CVS. Oh, yeah, they're, they're they, all over they, the they place. Had to close. They had to close. You see security guards But like I will this. say. Like, I can't I know, do I know. anything. So but now, I will say that Gascon is not up there right we're, now. So we're, we're not. No, no, we're not talking. Bro, we're not talking I'm about just, Gascon. I, 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 I know. I am no. Like, but, he's, you know, there, he, there's people trying to recall this Gascon, guy. Gascon, I want you on the podcast. Yeah, and, come down. Uh, I would love to have you. I'd love to talk to you. Me too. I'd love to pick your brain. Me I, too. I heard you were at the bike shed. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was at the bike shed uh, oh. a few, uh, a few they get, months ago. Did they get TVs yet? Uh, no, for the soccer? Yeah, they should fucking have TVs, yeah, dude. It, it, How are you going to have a bar the, and not have TVs? It's that the prices of like to stream that shit. This, like it's science or something. I don't know. It gets expensive. Dude, if Hinanu, because they, they if Hinanu can have it <laughs> in Venice and they only take cash and they're a dive bar, Bike Shed can have yeah, it. Yeah, but they're, 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 he's probably doing it very like black box and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I won't say anything. Bike Shed, just fucking get it done. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the, but the question is, is that like, we're, again, it's not about Gascon. It's yeah. about California. Yeah. How that guy hits these police officers, which had a bunch of different police recruits from different departments throughout the L.A. County right. and Orange County. And so they're like, he's going to be facing, you know, there was right. five badly injured. So my, my, injured. My, my, my first they, question they is... Them, they released him out on bail. Me, well, me personally, I'd probably try to declare a doubt on him, saying that he's not fit to stand trial. Um, and then I get a therapist to, or a psych to write a letter saying he's not fit to stand trial. Uh, and then they, they would release him to some sort of mental hospital. I'm not sure exactly how they That's released what they're him. Doing. They're saying he had some right. mental, it's men- mental exhaustion. Right. It, it, it's probably a mental health diversion. Um, but you can, I mean, you can't divert murder, but you know, um, Absolutely, my my strategy would be to declare a doubt on him and have him like certified, and then then go to trial because then he can't stand trial. What, what what do you think about scenes? I'm I'm very random. If you listen to this podcast, but yeah, I um, do. just off the cuff, let's go off the. Uh, what I'm thinking is a Denzel Washington, yeah, uh, training day, where he gets his guy, and he says, um, as they're gonna sentence him. The guy had peanut butter in his ass, but nobody knew he had peanut butter in his ass. Oh, yeah, yeah. He reaches down, he grabs the peanut butter, and he starts eating it, and they dismissed the case and released him. That, you know? Well, that's not, that doesn't happen. <laughs> okay. Uh, if he if he did that, they'd be like, oh, we're going to declare a doubt. Uh, bailiff, 
sheriffs, can you please go and they'll put on gloves and go get him and put him in the back and then he'll be released to a mental health hospital. They ain't gonna dismiss that shit. That's not how it works. Or I think they, I think that's what happened, right? Or whatever. What, what he got away from the sentence of life sure, in sure. jail and went to a mental hospital. Yeah, something. and then you guys just got to do your time in mental health hospital, and then when you, when you become competent, then they come and try you, and then you're still liable. So, um, when I was in uh, Bakersfield PD, there was a lot of people that were I had I was basically in charge of uh, all the in custody clients. And a lot of these, it was all misdemeanor stuff. And a lot of these guys were obvious users. And I would see them, you know, weeks later. And they'd be like, Mr. Miller, I'm so sorry I'm back here, blah, 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 blah. And if I was told specifically not to declare a doubt on them, it's called 1368, where you, you declare that they're, that you have a doubt on their sanity, that they, they're not fit. Um, and I was specifically told, do not do that. Because uh, they'll be in the mental health hospital longer than the punishment for the crime that they committed before they come back to court. Mm. Um, and I literally had a trial where, um, oh my God, this guy uh, uh, ran in. He, I, I think he was he was using heroin. I think he shot up outside of a ninety nine cent store, and then had like a purging incident where he needed to either shit piss or throw up or whatever so he ran into this 99 cent store um pulled down his pants with his dick out and he ran straight to the back to the black doors and then he started peeing once he got behind the black doors and people were saying that he was you know sitting there you know yanking it uh and the guy had been there for he had had like 255 days in jail already because of covid and, and and whatnot and uh i had the trial and the the judge called me to the back and was like hey are you are you gonna declare a doubt on this man i'm like nope well why not well because he's helping me with his defense which he was kind of uh but the judge declared a doubt himself and I got up and I fucking yelled at the judge. I was like, this is improper. This, if you convicted him today, he'd be out today because he's already spent more than six months in jail. Now you're declaring a doubt. He's going to be in here for six, eight months. This is unjust. Uh, and the judge looked at me in Bakersfield like, boy, you better shut the fuck up. And I just like sat down and, you know, uh, <laughs> what am I going to do? Bro. Like, you know, boy. we do, you know, like this. But did he say boy? No, he just looked at me like a fucking... You know, like, and I was like, yes, like sir. You could hear yes. it. Yeah. yeah, I could hear the, you know, what yeah, he was thinking. Shut the, shut the fuck, the fuck up. <laughs> um, and I got COVID uh, that trial, too. So. <laughs> Sue the courthouse. Through the fucking courthouse. What a fucking mess, man. Yeah. This, this, the, it's, it's, you would think law is black and white, but it's, it's just, not. It, it's it, not. There's it's n- not. There's no black or white. It's, it's not. just You all need to gray. make sure you get a good attorney because, the like, even if it's not me, good attorneys, you know, you all see the, the you know the 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 meme of hey, if you got this attorney you you're going to jail with the sloppy and the baggy jeans or baggy pants or whatever you need somebody who looks looks acts speaks and presents himself like a boss and then you're going to do well the, the the way that i described you is is i had an issue and i reached out and i reached out just to like I didn't want to do anything yet, but I, I just wanted some information. Yeah. And the way I described you is you, you're like, you were like a fucking pit bull where you're like, let me just fucking take care of this right now. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't have to like, you know, it's, it's not even that I'm, like, I'm, I'm taking care of this right now. And you right. jumped on it so fucking quick, like a fucking pit bull, like a boss that I was like, holy fuck. And like that, right after that moment, I was like, okay. Like th- this is this is the guy that yeah. I got to deal with. This, this is, is the guy I got to recommend. This is the guy that I want part of my brand. This is the guy that I want to work with. This is the guy that I want to help me do, uh, you know, laws and regulations for my guest and recording and filming and everything else. And then right. that 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 really because because other people are just like, eh, it's okay. Just don't. Do I mean, this. You, don't do that. You like, have guys just 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 you know crossing the or checking the boxes off, but like that's not what as far as I understand what being an attorney is, right? I'm not here to check the boxes off. I'm here to solve your problem. And, you know, and, and there is a little, you know, 
you know, people pay you money and they expect it to go away like that. And that's not how this works. It takes massaging. It takes strategy. It takes it's a process. charisma. It, it, it you know, uh, it's, it's a process and you need to let me do my fucking job, but I understand I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it well. And you're going to get the best results that I can possibly. Cause I just give this is my life. Yeah. You know, I, I hunt, kill and, you know, cook my own meat. So, um, th- this, th- this is it for me. And I have a great fucking time doing my job. Um, I, I, I love my job and, uh, I, I, I appreciate the persona that I present in court. And I think that it's very much so respected by the judge. Um, and the DAs get fucked. So it's great. I just had a DA today, dude, the worst DA I've ever dealt with in Lancaster. And the judge just ran over her for me, um, because I was presented and I'm, you know, uh, I present well, um, and I won. So, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. You, you also have experience and you work in, um, and you have a team for, for PI work. Right. So I do a lot of PI stuff. I have, I don't know if, I think I said it earlier. Uh, I have a multi-million dollar lift case. I have, we've settled a so Uber the, case. The, the multi-million dollar lift case is a PI job or? Yeah. It's a personal injury job. Uh, basically this woman was in the back of a lift car. No, no, sorry. P, yeah. See, that's a good question. There's a mix ups. Private investigator, personal injury. So PI means personal injury. Got it. Uh, Got I'm it. not a detective by any means. Got uh, it. See, uh, that was my misunderstanding. Right. So PI is personal injury. So if you get, so for all those bikers out there that get hit by a car, uh, I well, can help. Okay. Um, and I can help make sure that one, you're, you're taken care of by the, the, the doctors you're seeing. Um, two, make sure you're getting the most out of, the injury because if you just go through the insurance they're just going to pay straight for your medical bills and straight for your thing and you're not going to get any any cash in your hand but so so that that, that's i want to talk about i want to talk about the the and I'll, I'll, i'll we'll talk about this later but um the the worst case scenarios what happens if you get hit and let's say the insurances are all great but you picked up a shitty attorney you know how does one, how does an individual get fucked if they get the wrong attorney? Well, um, they can send you to doctors and have you're doing too much doctor work. You know, like um, uh, sending you to hospitals and stuff just to just to show that there is medical expenses, and then all of a sudden, well, those. Th- there's no mechanism of injury that produces what you're saying. Therefore, we're not going to pay for all that other, uh, that extra stuff. That seems like it's pre-existing. Like, oh, I have a lower back injury. Well, how long have you had the lower back? Well, I've had the lower back injury since I was 15 years old. Okay, well, we're not going to pay for that stuff, right? Um, you really need to make sure that the work that you're doing medically is it's to your injury. To your case, yeah. And you can't really fudge that too much. Um, and you shouldn't fudge that too much. Um, another way is them just not really knowing how to negotiate. You know, um, you know, I've, I have people on my team that have been doing this for 35 plus years and, you know, they're older than most of the adjusters, right. And they've been doing it for a long time. So they understand exactly what the game is. You know, this isn't, you're not, you're not one of those law firms that takes everybody's experience and adds and say, we have 300,000 years. No, of I'm telling you specifically, you have, <laughs> I have a team and this one gentleman has 35 years experience, yeah. right? I don't have 35 years. I'm 34 years old. So that's yeah. impossible. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that that experience is utilized in the firm and that's what we go off of. Right. So I, I you know, the firm does have 35 years experience. Yeah. Um, and my guy is amazing. He knows what the fuck's going on. Um, and you know, he's very intellectual. He's a JD, went to New York law school. Um, and we've, we're, we're winning, you know, we're fucking winning and we're good doing good guys, by, man. we're going, we're doing good by our clients and that's what it's about. Right. I'm really just trying to take, make sure that like, you know, I'm not out here selling shit. I'm out here selling myself and, uh, I want to make sure that everything that I provide to my clients is top notch. 
because this the legal world is a small community, right? I, I, I'm here to be a good person. I'm, you know, I was raised Catholic. Not that that means anything, uh, but I'm here to put out good energy into the world and I'm not here to screw people. And by no means is that how I'm operating my businesses. Um, so yeah, we, you know, we have 35 years experience. <laughs> um, and you know, we're able to carry on these huge cases and we're a boutique firm. We're not one of these firms that has a billboard on the thing called, called Jacob. So sorry, Jacob and Ronnie, um, were you dealing with a, not, not even like the second tier of the attorneys, you're dealing with like brand new associates, right? Like, and you're just another number on their page. I have, my clients text me, you know, to my personal phone. And if anything happens, I, I respond right away, right? You're not going through layers and layers of, Hey, can I talk to my attorney? Yeah, sure. He'll call you in like a couple of days and then a couple of days comes and you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I wonder if it's um, when you have a, a newer group of attorneys, it seems like they're hungrier. It seems like they're. It's they're, not that they're hungrier. I feel like they're they have a chip on their shoulder. Um, and being in being a younger attorney, you know, relatively recently, you know, maybe what was it five years ago? Um, and thirty nine years. That's what I said. You got to get all the experiences. Right. Everybody's yeah. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, when I was a new attorney, I was definitely a bigger asshole. Um, and now I'm learning and that's why they call practicing law, right? You practice just like practicing medicine, right? It's all practice. They don't teach you how to practice law in law school. They teach you how to think. Practicing law comes with actually doing the cases and handling them and trying different techniques and whatnot. And just dealing with different attorneys, you know, there's there is an art to it it's it's legitimately an art um and you can definitely tell when attorneys are new they're just like fuck you i'm gonna fucking do all these things and you're like dude take it easy chill out we'll get you the discovery don't yeah. worry about it you know um but it's you know uh you know what's funny is that when i was becoming an attorney all the old heads were like don't do it don't do it and I was like, no, dude, fuck you. You guys are naysayers. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to do a good job. Yeah. And now that I'm an attorney and people come up to me, don't fucking do it. <laughs> Just because it's so much stress. And, um, oh, you know, bro, I give you fucking credit. I'm telling you. No. And I, like, I, I've done, I've dealt with attorneys and I've dealt with court cases and just, you know, every day on that fucking grind and right. dealing with the judge and, and it's just like stories. And it's not just like the judges, though. It's it's, you know, the clients come to you and they they they're coming to you at their most traumatic time. Right. Like yeah. when they're going for an attorney, shit has hit the fan and it hit it a while ago. You know, I'm like, oh, maybe I should call an attorney. Yeah. And then they True. pay you dollars, lots of dollars. And then they expect you to fix it. And that's, like I said, that's not how it works. Um, so the stress of, hey, did you, is my car out? Hey, did, did you know, in my property? Hey, did you talk to the, did, hey, did you talk to the, hey, like, you know. Like, hey, no. Hey. Uh, <laughs> I don't think yeah, so. I wrote the motion and like, they're going to respond to it and I'll fucking let you know, you know, like. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, when you hear about people making Two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars off of fucking social media. Uh, like, man, did I get into the wrong profession here? Work my ass off, study all this time, and become a smart individual to, you know, and hustle and kill and skin my own fucking meal. Uh, did I make the right choice? And you know what? I think I did. Oh, I, dude, the social media thing's so hard. I think I did. The social don't 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 ever compare the social media because it's, it's just like, it's just frustrating you know it's not frustrating it's 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 uh it, you know you know what's frustrating it's frustrating when you're in the social media game and you're seeing people blow up for no fucking reason oh yeah like, yeah I'm what sure. the fuck yeah ninety eight <laughs> episodes motherfucker <laughs> fucking millions of fucking posts uh, intricate conversations hours well, of well this fucking is different content. you guys are doing shit like like you know the people that are just like especially the girls you know your girls are doing the oh yeah, yeah. 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 Dude, we got to like, start OnlyFans. Like, yeah, <laughs> like let me fucking shake my ass and make a uh, fucking two hundred grand a year for fucking more. I, I had a girl on the podcast, a CJ, CJ Spas, 
mm, CJ. CJ. Uh, and, and, and she's clearing like 50000 60000 a month. A month. Yeah. Uh, she's got a podcast, too. She's you know, I love, I love like, uh, these porn stars now are on Twitter. Yeah. And they're, they're considered streamers. And it's like, no, they're porn stars. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, I don't know who it was, but somebody was at a Twitter uh, event and she broke her back. And, like, there was all this stuff about, like, yeah. the streamer broke her back. Like, are you sure it was from streaming and not from... Yeah. You know? <laughs> It's just kind of funny. No, we're, we're, we're in an interesting time of how people are making money. And, it is and interesting. Living. And people have so much money but right it's, now. It's, it's, like, it's so crazy, dude. It's, it's about people buying houses out here. Like, where the fuck are these people getting this money? And it's just insane. Um, are you coming on our ride this Saturday? Uh, I'm, I'm driving there. You're going to drive there? Yeah. Why don't you go? Yeah, my wife's in Dubai, and I got my uh, three. Oh, you got your kid for yeah. sure, for sure, for sure. So I'm, I'm, well, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take him out, check out the bikes. Cool, you're gonna come to RSD. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. You got a big announcement. I, ha- I had Rolling Sands on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a familiar. Uh, big announcement. Yeah, big announcement. Uh, I'm not allowed to up. say. Uh, yeah, but I, I know actually, you're having another uh, meeting with. Yeah, yeah. Franco and Adam. Actually, we were just talking, but right as you got here, right. Got well, those I talked messages. to them about. I talked to them about that, so I was like, uh, nice. Oh, they know you're here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh cool. Well, I told I was like, hey, should I plug this thing? I'm like, oh, let's wait. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't say anything. Understand. It's only for us because we're. <laughs> uh, I I had Roland Sands on the podcast. I, oh, did you? I, They're I cool had, people. I like them. Oh, Rollins. What's cool is, um, you know, confession. Like when I met, when I when I talked to uh, RSD, I was like, you know, yeah, I want to interview like a manager or somebody. Like I didn't even like. I'm not gonna like fucking ask Roland, right? And this was in the middle of COVID. This is like, oh, masks, you know, fucking vaccines, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I showed up to RSD at the old location. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, Robert, yeah, we're waiting for you. Uh, Roland's upstairs waiting for you. I'm like, you ought to go to his office. And not, they're like, yeah, yeah. You, you know where his office is at? And I'm like, no. I think, right? It's like over there. They're like, yeah, upstairs. I was like, oh, over there upstairs? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Behind the up, velvet rope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I go upstairs. <laughs> And and I meet Roland. I set up, and I'm like, "Holy fucking shit! This is because that was." Episode. I've never I've never met Roland. Oh, only, he's, only, he's, only like the I read the CEO. She's a very nice woman. I forgot her name. And then listen uh, to that podcast, Annie. I don't think Annie's working there anymore, though. But listen to that podcast. Uh, that one, number one, it's 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 a mind fuck because it's like a, a time travel of the middle of the pandemic. You know, like oh, yeah. the, no, there was no traffic anywhere. Whatever the right. case is. And number two, within five minutes, we were doing your mama jokes. Like, just, <laughs> your mama's so fat. <laughs> like, we were just doing mama jokes. You know? That's funny. He's like, because we were Did talking. he have a mask on? Did you have no, a mask on? No, no, no. No mask. Fucking, we were cool, dude. Whiskey and. No condoms, nothing. Speaking about whiskey, like, can we get another, can we get a whiskey shot? Yeah, man. It's, it's, this is water, bro. It is water. And I'm done with my water. Sweet. Here we go. So no, this uh, is awesome to have you on the podcast. You and I met at the Sony gig. Yeah, that was very cool. Um, I, you know, being uh, Angelino, born and bred. Cheers. Salud, salud, salud. Um, I've never been. Well, besides, well, <laughs> let me take that back. My dad and I uh, hopped the fence at Universal a couple of times to just uh, walk around. That's how. That's. I was raised by my daddy. Um, parents got divorced when I was eight, and I chose to live with my dad. Um, I love my dad. I'm like my dad, but I'm new and improved. I, I like to say all the bad things, kind of trying to chip away at those things. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, the Sony studio was fucking cool. I've, it was, it's always like, I feel like we're going to like Disneyland almost. Everything was so nice and like the grass it, was it cut was very nice. the cleanest, most. They had the rainbow look, for the they had Wizard a fucking of Oz. Rainbow. Well, he, to add to what you're saying, I'm from LA. Like LA is like. Born and bred. Fucking. Pfft, Where were you like, born? LA. Um, I, I don't talk about that. Oh. Um. <laughs> So, so were you born in LA then? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Then yeah. I won't. I won't. But if yeah, you yeah. weren't born in LA, what the fuck? Why oh no, no, I was born in LA. Oh yeah. I was born in Bellflower. Just Bellflower. I'll, 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 I'll See, but that sounds gangster. Kaiser, you know, fucking my, my Kaiser. Doesn't Bellflower. Sound as gangsters that so you know. Like yeah, my, a, I was raised in fucking well, Ball, I can, I can Baldwin Park, El Monte. Hold and on, then, I'll bleep it out. Oh, Glendale. 
That's not Dick. bad. That's it's not, not bad. bad. You know, that's not bad. Uh, you know, yeah. It's 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 not it's not no no no. There's, there's no problem. But Memorial right there. Huh? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people. A good but a lot of people are like, yo, that's fucking crazy. Well, back in the days, it was super fucking nice. Um, oh, was it? I didn't, I didn't realize that. But but it's interesting because like what you bring up is that Sony Studios. I've never been to that Sony Studios. Right, I drive no, past that thing all the time. Number one, what that's my other thing. I never even been in that neighborhood. Oh, Culver and, City, and I was like, "Well, I've been to Culver City, but, but like it's right there." People right that here. I visit in Culver City are like, "Oh, that's not even near that." Yeah, I visit Culver like, City's big. I, yeah, that's the other thing because I, I always went by like where that mall's at. Yeah, Fox Hills, the Fox, and like that mall is fucking pretty ghetto, dude. Like that mall, that that's a horribly built mall. There's nothing in there. It, there's the nothing Gold's, in there. There's Gold's Gym in there is like the tiniest fucking thing. Why the fuck is there a Gold's I Gym in the mall? So that's know. what I'm saying. So when I saw that part of Culver City, I'm like, holy fuck, this is a nice neighborhood. This is some. You good know what? Gym. I've been looking I've at houses the over there. I've been always in the valley my whole life. They're like 1.2 for like. 900 square feet two bedroom one bathroom it's like not even like it's whoa and they're built in like the 30s you know like it's like it's 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 interesting they're very small properties over there well that's how burbank is burbank has a lot of small properties Dude, burbank burbank has like small houses they have all bungalow shit yeah they do Dude, they I've, do. I've, I've been like that's crazy i've been in the valley well i've lived in different parts of california and i lived in miami for a little bit but I've been in the Valley. Every time I lived in L.A., I've been in the Valley. Yeah. Like I went to Burbank Elementary. Oh, cool. Walter Reed. Oh, cool. Van Nuys. Kind of <laughs> Park. <laughs> El Camino. I got kicked did out you go to El schools. Camino? I did go to El Camino. Fucking A. What, I did the what, Navy. What, I did what the year Navy were you? ROTC. The JROTC. What year were you? I was in El Camino 96. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. When, when the fuck you just aged then? yourself. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, um, no people don't. No, age. I have some. Uh, I have some friends that went to, oh, to El Camino, but they were. It was we were a class of 06. So they were class of 06. Right. No, no, I went in 06, but I I, I graduated in 2000. Yeah, so we went to 96, and then you're class of yeah. yeah. I was. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I finished school. I think I was in eighth grade. In I, I was in the <laughs> central. I was in the Santa Cruz. I finished high school in Santa Cruz. Oh, cool! How you know what Santa Cruz? I've driven through there when I was coming back from Fucking MSF. Badass. Yeah, I've always wanted to like go up there and chill out and the banana slugs. Let's go! Like, look, I, I tell people, um, especially in the motorcycle community, one of the best rides I've ever done in my life is PCH. Up, up the one, yeah, yeah. PCH. We just did that on BMC. We did our little BMC retreat. And we we drove up the uh, PCH. I to wish Big they Sur. would do something like that again. You know. You know we we might. Um, it might be more something like a you know uh, um, greenhorn type of deal where uh, you know you have checkpoints and stuff like that because it would be really hard to have a group travel up you know three four hundred miles at the same time. Like it was it was a lot just to have our team doing it together. Yeah. Um, so I think that's something like the Greenhorn. You're familiar with Greenhorn? Yeah. yeah. Where they, like, you just get like checkpoints, right? And yeah. you do that. Um, yeah, because you could. There, there's plenty of places to stop and, and do the check-ins. You know, right, you, right. You got the Madonna Inn. You got the Hearst Castle. Oh, the Madonna Inn is great. That, 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 that's a cool spot. Yeah, we went up to Mor- uh, Morro Bay. Uh, that was very cool. Yeah. Um, just to see those, those little hills out there in the ocean. Um, Rigsby Bridge. Right, right. Big speed, uh, big speed, big speed, big speed. Uh, yeah, that I, place is cool though. Have you been to Big Sur? Yeah, of course. You camped. Dude, in, I used to live in Santa Cruz. Have you, have you camped in Big Sur? No, I used to camp in Santa Cruz in Monterey. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, there's a we uh, when I graduated from law school, I found this uh, first come first surf spot. It was basically a. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to tell anybody where it is because I don't want to ruin it for myself. Um, but it was great. It was like right off the coast, and we were able to drive up the thing and. Uh, it's beautiful out there. Like it's just immaculate. Yeah, the, when I lived there, when I lived there, it it's fucking immaculate. It's so beautiful, right? But the problem is, the problem is, <laughs> when you when you're going out, when you're finishing your high school there, everybody knows everybody in town. It's a small right? town. It's a small town. Yeah, everybody knows who you're dating. And when you break up, everybody knows who you used to date. And then, like, when you're trying to, like, date new people, they're like, didn't oh, you yeah, date yeah. so-and-so? And you're like, oh, no, it wasn't like that. Well, I saw you guys. And, like, what do you mean? Like, everybody sees the, the drama is a different level of fucking That's drama. Funny. I honestly think that the Valley is small like that enough to where no. everybody knew. Dude. Yeah, dude. No way. Like, dude, there's, there's no way. No, there you know what people, they opened down the street right here? What? Carlito's Way. 
Do they really? Yeah, remember Carlitos Way's just to be on Van Nuys? Yeah. They just opened it like two weeks ago. Where? Over here on what? Right Colfax? Here. No, no. Uh, Moore Park and Tahanga. Tahanga. Dude, like four minutes away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They just opened that up. Is which, that the, uh, where the cactus used to be? It's right where the cactus is. It's a, it, so the cactus. It used to be, what was it? It used to be Henry's. It used to be Henry's. Which I think so, is dog shit. And Henry's is still there. Where? Across the street next to oh, the laundry okay. mat. They're just like in a little thing. So I think Henry's is dog. Henry's is one of those businesses that I can't wrap my head around it where I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like I went there and they're like, what would you like? I was like, fucking three carne asadas and one carnitas. They're like, we don't have that. I go, what? Well, what do you have? They're like, we have ground Boil? beef and fucking hard shell tacos. I was like, shut uh, up. No. So, okay. so I got that. And then I was like, all right, let me get a Jamaica. They're like, we don't have that. I go, what do you mean? <laughs> So they, they gave me these wannabe Taco Bell tacos oh. with the fucking, the sugary, shitty Coke. And I'm like, how the fuck does this last for like 20 years? It did, Well, they, the stuff that they had before was different. I, um, well, first off, first off, Cactus, the one in Hollywood, the original one off Well, no, Vine. this is Henry's. No, I know. Now I know. it's Cactus. Now it's Cactus. But Cact, I used to go to Cactus. The Cactus? Cactus. Cact- it's Cactus. Oh, I want some Cac? You want some Cactus? I used to go there in high school, like on late nights, <laughs> down in Hollywood and Vine. And then all of a sudden, the the Cactus on uh, Moore Park and Woodman, that used to be a Bronco burrito. Uh, and then all of a sudden Cactus was like buying Henry's and buying Bronco and I, you know, I'm, I'm happy for them. Uh, but yeah, Henry's used to suck. Like I went there twice and I was like, oh, I'm not doing this. And there's Hugo's, right? You got Hugo's over here on cold water. Yeah, there's not really good Mexican in the Valley. No, there's, there's not. They all have the same orange signs too. I don't know if they're going to the same sign spot. There's, there's a place on Van Nuys next to the, uh, the park. That's pretty good. I forgot what that place it is does called. the signs. They have the orange. No, no, no. Well, it's got an orange sign. But, but it's, it's Mexican. Food. It's Mexican food. Yeah. It's pretty good. Dude, um, I, I like the Glenda old school ones. Which El one? Sal's. I don't, I don't know what that is. El Sal's. Dude, El Sal's. Let me tell you something. El Sal's. I've been eating there for over 20 years. Yeah. That shit never fails. Really? Uh, there's the other one that's the A frame building. Um, El Tapatio. Okay. I've been there. Tapatio. That, yeah. That's old school. Like, I, I, I like. It's good stuff, but especially else, when you get over there in the, on the east side of the. Yeah, but how the fuck do you, you the the place on Tahanga, the truck? I don't know. About I, the I, Angel, Angel something. I haven't been here since the truck. They make here. some good shit, bro. But like the rest of the stuff, like two things I can't find in in the Studio City Sherman Oaks area is a good steakhouse and tacos. You got a lot of those right here. Where? Lala's? Lala's? Oh, Lala. bro, fuck Lala's. You don't like Lala's? Arge- Dude, Argentinian food, let, isn't it? Let, look, I'll, I'll tell you this. <laughs> I love Argentinian food, and I love Argentina. I'm barbecue. going to Argentina in February. Uh, Argentina barbecue is the shit. Lala's is... I don't know about now, but I'll, watch this. I had a Korean friend of mine call me up, and he's like, hey, I'm coming to Studio City. I want to eat steak. I go, cool. I was at a cigar shop. I'm in the cigar shop. Right here, local, all across the street from each other, right? I go, guys, where's the good steakhouse? And one well, of the Lala's. guys goes, Lala's. And, and, and everybody was like, get the fuck out of it. That place is garbage. And everybody was like, no. And I was like, dude, that's garbage. Why would you even recommend that? Because I went there. I haven't been there for like 15 years. Dude, I went there a long time ago, and it was the worst meat I ever had. And everybody that, that I talked to mm. said the exact same thing. And now I've been hearing recently it's been better. So I, I don't well, know. We can go to Fogo de Chao. I don't know what that is. That's yeah, but Fogo de Chao is on fucking La, La Cienega in yeah. Beverly Hills almost. It, it's too it's too far Ruth, out. Ruth's Chris, I don't. That, I mean, they used to be okay. Uh, the one in Beverly Hills closed already, but what? Fogo the Chow? No, Ruth, Ruth's Chris. Oh, never been. Ruth's Chris is great. It's uh, it was it was from uh, New Orleans. It was Ruth's, and then Chris brought and bought it, and then so it's Ruth's Chris. Oh, no, sorry, it's the other way around. It's Chris, and then Ruth bought it, and it's Ruth's Chris. Um, but that was my favorite spot when I was a kid. Like. Uh, there's one in Beverly Hills. There's one in Marina del Rey. It's pretty decent. I mean, for for what it is, you're getting, you know, it's like a fifty dollar steak, and it's it's pretty pretty, you know. But it's all a la carte. You know, you gotta get the mush, or the mushrooms, and the mush, uh, mashed potatoes, and whatnot. You know what's bomb? There's a Korean barbecue spot on Van Nuys and Sherman Way. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's it called? Oh, fuck, I can't remember. It's just Sherman Way, whatever. You just put those fucking streets. Dude, number one, I can't believe how affordable they are. Number two, I've taken Korean friends of mine. 
Uh, really? And they're like, wow. And they're like, motherfucker, you don't take Koreans to all you can eat Korean barbecue. I go, why, why not? Why not? Like we don't do that. Like that's just that's American. It's 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 the rule. Yeah, like we go to the all ups, you can eat. Yeah, we go to the upscale shit. We don't do this all you can eat, or it's got to be like super Korean or something. Right. By the time we're done, the best meat, best quality, really? best flavors, but like they're blown away. Like what's it called? Shit. It's shit. It's Van Eyes and Sherman. It's oh, Van Eyes and, and, and you gotta give them a shout out. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, you know, a spot that I was going to in high school for a long time, it's it's over there by um, the In-N-Out on Van Nuys. It's called, it used to be called Golden Burger. Now it's called Golden Yaki. It's right next to Pineapple Hill, which which is, you know, been been a bar for me for, for a long time, you know, growing up, whatever. Uh, but Golden Yaki, they have the best teriyaki bowls, the best burgers, and they're cheap. You can get, like, a whole meal for, like, six bucks. What, what, what's Pineapple? Pineapple Hill? Yeah, what's the pineapple? Oh, Hill? Pineapple Hill. Sounds like is, a bar. It's a great bar. <laughs> uh, it's been there for a long time. Uh, I actually had my graduation party there and from CSUN. and uh, it's just a it's okay. just, just a little dive bar. Uh, it's pretty good. They have oh, they have um, animal style fries because they're in they're in the same parking lot as as In and Out, but they make their own. St- like animal style fries and it, it they're way <laughs> better than in and outs animal style fries really yeah have you had them no you should go try them out they're serving uh-huh. breakfast there now uh and which pineapple is, hill. yeah pineapple it's kind of weird they got like it's a called pineapple hill it's a bar pineapple hill it's in the in and out plaza of uh sherman oaks right right which kind of feels like Van Nuys, it's on van Nuys and moore park yeah yeah he's across the street from well i guess the hamburger hamlet's gone now but um yeah yeah that's right that, across that, the street from el torito Oh, the, ori- the original. Yeah. No, is it? No, across the street's uh, another it, Korean barbecue spot. Well, it's Gayu Kaku's over there. Gayu Kaku's. But yeah. in the same parking lot, there's, funny there's El Torito. I hey, like Gayu Kaku. That, that is pretty good. But that's limited. That's bullshit. What is? Com- that that, that Gayu Kaku? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but back in the day, it was a good, good no, place no, 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 to, no. It's to drink. good. It's good. The amount of like food they like give you bucks. is like whack. This other spot, you could be like, I want three bulgogis and four fucking pepper steaks and five of this. And they're like, all right, oh, yeah. I phone. just, I just went to a um, one more. Sh- yeah, I'll take one. Um, I just went to All You Can Eat with uh, Adam Plax from. Sounds like a tall man. He's a tall, <laughs> handsome, dark <laughs> man. No, uh, he's he's the the B- BMC CEO essentially. Yeah, he was just um, on the show. Right, and he's going to be back on the show soon, That's right? right. Sweet. That's right. Love my buddy, Adam. Um, I feel like announcing that shit. Let me see what they said. Yeah, yeah. Adam. <laughs> we, should, we should just FaceTime him. Like, I, think, I think I should be on that 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 discussion with them. Dude, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> I need the invite, though. They, um, you are more than welcome to look. Hey, Robert, if you're still interested in hosting, blah 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 blah, f- private, blah 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 blah. We'll send you dates for blah 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 blah. These dates work with Adam and I. When would you be interested? So blah 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 blah. Okay, blah, blah, so blah, they're going to be on. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, <laughs> enforce.com, Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Attorney at law. Blah 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 blah. I'm 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 saying it. If you guys. If you go to, so here's the other thing. If you go to rideboundless.net, there's a website there. If you want to sponsor the podcast, there is packages where you can just sign up and uh, do the packages uh, or the sponsorship packages. There's forms and groups that I'm starting there. So go to rideboundless.net, go into a group, uh, and you'll be part of the motorcycle of every guest that I have on here. We'll start doing that. And then there's collaborations. In collaborations, you'll see Forrest's information you'll see information of people that I'm dealing with and have been dealing with that are offering exclusive deals uh, to to you guys, to the listeners, to people that listen to the show, to people that listen to me, to people that listen to the guest. So make sure you check out rideboundless.net. Right. And if you uh, if you hit me up and you say that you're from Ride Boundless or you found me on Ride Boundless, I, was, I will definitely give you a discount. Um, uh, but yeah, if you have any questions about law or legal questions you know you hit me up happy to you do a free consultation if you if it's not something that, that i practice uh, i can at least refer you to a legitimate attorney instead of you going to 
Google and, and, and guessing and, and just paying for somebody who's paying for a lot of, uh, you know, ad space. Yeah, what people don't understand is how, di- okay, fuck it. You get into this situation, you need an attorney. The moment you need an attorney, listen to me, the moment you need an attorney, it's so difficult to, like, pinpoint who you can trust. Because the first thing you're going to do is you're going to Google shit. Then you're going to be like, all right, this one's got like 4.5, that one's got 5, and that one's got like 3.5 stars. Then you start reading the comments, and it's like, well, that's a little personal. Like you start, it's, it's just so much uncomfort and, and stress trying to pick out an attorney. Listen to what I'm saying. Pick out an attorney where here is a good referral. BMC is referring. Ride Balance is referring. Robert Valderrama is referring. An attorney that if you have any problems with your motorcycles, accidents, PI, not private investigation, but, you know, pr- uh, personal injury. Or anything. Or, anything. Or, or, I can at least get you to somebody who knows the what right the person. fuck they're they doing. They can point to the right direction. Right, right. And 99% of the problems that, that I've dealt with in my life is I just need to make sure that what I'm doing is right. And if it's not, what is the right approach? Right. So. I, I have I have a big respect for what you're doing. I thank you, man. I, I couldn't I, do I, it. I appreciate that. It's I, hard. It's it, hard. It's no, no. For, for for me, it's super fucking hard. Trust me. Like I've I've been, I, I know the legal system, um, and I handle myself very well. But there's something about having an attorney by your side, uh, telling you to you straight how things are. Right. You know that that just it just pays off. So I'm going to end this podcast with the cheers. Salute. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for the drinks. Looking forward to hanging out. And more than likely, I'll see you this Saturday for the ride. Let's do it. It's going to be a fun ride. Uh, Racer T-Bar to RSD. I'm not sure if you're going to put this out before Saturday, but... but I didn't plan to, but I might. Um, Website? Uh, So, ForrestMillerLaw.com. My phone number, and it's my personal cell phone number. So, that's the firm number. It's 818-384-1128. It is an 818 number because I'm a Valley local. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask me. If I don't know the the answer because it's out of my spectrum or my my realm of law, I can absolutely refer you to somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, and hit me up. I'm happy to help. It's my job. Thank you, Forrest. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Anytime, bro. Anytime you want to be on.